Episode 37 of Everywhere You Look, the unofficial, official, unofficial Full House podcast. My name's Thomas Green. You can find me on Twitter at NotByTomGreen. And I'm Alex Green, and you can find me on Twitter at TheAlexBGreen. This week, Season 2, Episode 15, entitled Pal Joey, a little awkward. A little awkward was the wording. It couldn't be my, it couldn't be my pal Joey, or just Joey. It's, it's Pal Joey. Jesse and Joey get very close. Danny gets jealous. Uh, and everything kind of goes completely from there. Before we go forward, though, a little bit of housekeeping up front as normal. First off, if you dig the opening theme song, check out the band Beat Radio, uh, one of my favorite bands. They were kind enough to record a cover of the Full House theme song so we could use it for the show. Check them out at beatradio.bandcamp.com to get a special free download of that song as well as most of their other songs from their catalog. If you could, if you'd like, please subscribe to us on iTunes. Go to tinyurl.com slash fullhousepodcast. Write us five stars, write a short review, and I'll cuss you out on a future episode of the podcast like I will to a young man named Michael later on in this show. Also, be our friend on social media if you could, please, please, please. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, we are on all of those. Facebook.com slash Everywhere You Look Podcast. Everywhere You Look Podcast dot Tumblr dot com. And at Full House Pod on Twitter. And I'll give you a clue. We normally put these up a little early on iTunes on Tuesday afternoons uh, before the Tuesday night release everywhere else. You can find them on Tumblr early too. So without any further ado, as Alex is not paying attention to the show at all. Um, this is all your part. No, well, I was getting ready to go to your part. This day in history, I stayed <laughs> out of this because you have a very special thing to announce. I do. Okay, I'll get the less special one out of the way. Um, Cord Overstreet, who, if you watch Glee, he plays Sam. Um, he was born on this day in history. Suck it, Trouty Mouth. <laughs> but... More importantly, my favorite movie of all time... Wait, which day is this? February 17th, 1989. Thank you. Go ahead. What, why? Because you didn't say it in the first oh. place. Oh, I thought you did. No, I never okay. did. Well, February 17th, 1989 was the day that Bill and Ty's Excellent Adventure was released in theaters. Congrats. Thank you. It is Alex's favorite movie. It is. Ever. Um, and I asked you this in private earlier. I'm going to get you an answer publicly right now. <laughs> we were at lunch today. I'm going to ask you this question because you're a big Doctor Who fan, too. I enjoy Doctor Who. Okay. If we could only afford one item, but you had to get one of them, would you rather get the Doctor Who TARDIS or the phone booth from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? The phone booth. Good. Good answer, because Doctor Who sucks. Doctor Who does not suck. It's all like, hey, I'm British and I'm going to time travel. Hey, hey, hey. There's all these doctors. Seriously, there are more doctors on that show than friggin' ER. Like, is the fifth doctor like George Clooney? He's like, hey guys, I'm the doctor and I'm here to cut open your heart. Is that, is, what? what's going on? With these doctors. They're the same person. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. The doctor is the same person, but he regenerates his physical form. No, because, like, one of them's, like, that Brian Merchant guy, and the other one's, like, a gal, like a lady. Okay, there has never been a female doctor. I thought there was. There was, like, a big thing. It was, no, oh, there the female doctor. There have been female companions. There has yet to be a female doctor. Well, yeah, hashtag yes, all women should be allowed to be doctors. <laughs> But, no, I thought it was like the, the guy, the, the merchant guy, the Brian Merchant, or the Stephen Merchant, or Natalie Merchant, or something like that. Uh, there's the other guy, there's the fat guy, there was the old guy, there was the black guy. There well, was no black doctor. Then they're racist, too. <laughs> and these horrible British people can go suck it, as far as I'm concerned. This show, this intolerant show, Doctor Who, should be canceled right now and replaced with Downton Abbey. 
Oh, all the I time. love Downton Abbey. I don't, but Doctor Who sucks I'm that behind much. on it, though. Well, Doctor Who's behind on race and sexuality relations, so it can go suck it, as far as I'm concerned. Court Overstreet and Doctor Who can suck it. Oh, I meant to tell you earlier, by the way, when you were, like, having some kind of internal conflict over the Pal Joey thing. Yeah. That's a musical. It's called Pal Joey? Yeah. I've never heard of it. I think it's from, like, the 40s or something. It's an older musical. You're from the 40s. I think I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure Frank Sinatra did Pal Joey either like on stage or in a movie version. Well, you know what? I'm from the 80s with an eye for the ladies, and that plays from the 40s, and it's looking to scorties. Boop, 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 bop. Not amused. I'm amused. That's a great thing. That's a great rhyme. I just came up with a great rhyme. Scorties is not a good rhyme. Scorties. That's S-C-O-R-E apostrophe T-I-E-S. Hyphen, T-I-E-S even, is my sex partner. That musical when I go out and we have sex with people. I'm just shaking my head at him right now because I, okay, basic white girl moment, I literally can't even. You are very, very, very basic. That is not very nice. I just said that out loud. Divorce, divorce, divorce. divorce. Okay, so um, speaking of you know Tom having an eye for the ladies, uh, in our cold open... DJ has taken it upon herself to teach Michelle about who's cute and who's not. Uh, in case you're wondering, George Michael was cute when he was in Wham, but after Wham, he was rad. Okay, what's the difference? I'm not entirely sure. See, like, I'm rad, but I'm not, like, cute. I'm very spalding like I look like a basketball. You look like an overgrown cabbage patch kid. I look like a potato with... I look like I have, like, a mashed potato body with, uh... Like a shaved potato head. (laughs) That's kind of what I have going on. But I'm rad. So is that like next level sexy now? I don't know. That's what I was assuming. That it was like a step up from cute. Okay. Uh, They also shame Michael J. Fox for being short. I'm assuming. He he was married, but he's their size. So I'm assuming that Michael J. Fox had worked with one of the writers and pissed one of them off at some point. And so they're like, I'm going to get my revenge on him now. He's going to watch this show and he's going to be really upset. Michelle decides that Big Bird is the cutest guy. And DJ points out that they don't know if Big Bird's a boy or girl. But Michelle doesn't care. And she kisses a picture of Big Bird. Yeah, is is Big Boy a boy or a girl? I'm pretty sure Big Bird's a boy. Okay, because the last time I heard Big Bird, he didn't sound like Big Bird. He sounded like a little, little gay boy. He didn't sound like Big Bird, but I'm guessing whoever used to be Big Bird is either too old to be Big Bird or died. Uh, and by gay boy, I mean a feminine gay guy. I don't mean like, oh man, steers and blanks. I, I like everybody. I do. Except for like Hitler. Hitler and our neighbors. Everyone else I like. Yeah, our neighbors are pretty awful. Uh, we live in a house that is split into two units. And the people who live in the other unit are great. But the house next door is also split into two units, and the people who live in the unit closest to us have two vehicles that they like to park in front of our house. So they park one in front of theirs, then they park one in front of our unit or the unit downstairs, which means that one of us can never park in front of our house. They're really, really inconsiderate, and they're really, really just rude. Do we have their street address? Cause I'm not giving out their street address why? online. Well, A, everybody would be able to know where we lived, and that's weird no. and creepy. No, it's not. They would know the street. They wouldn't know the I number. I just said they live next door to us. Yeah, but they don't know. you don't know how you number it. Like, they're, the, the, the number well, difference Well, they is... would either go to the house on the other side, and when that didn't work, they'd come to our house. Do you people think people really care enough to, like, stalk us? I don't know. I don't want to give them the opportunity. Like, I don't... Stalking is scary. I don't know. I, our, our fans are fun. They're not, like, creepy. I'm just saying we're not giving out people's addresses online. Actually, tweet us at Full House Pod if you're creepy. Just be like, <laughs> I'm creepy. Period. Like, that's it. We don't need to know anything more. We don't need to know what you do during the podcast, what what positions you think of us, and just, I'm creepy, period, at Full House Pod on Twitter. Wait, people think of us in positions? I don't know, maybe. I, I, please don't. It's uh, not going to be nice for your brain, I'm sure. Well, me. I, you. I well, don't me know. either. Well, me, I mean, look at me. I I'm only like have a, good boobs, that's it. I only have good boobs, too, and that's... Uh, <laughs> That's another problem. 
So yeah, big, Michelle's sexually attracted to Big Bird, and let's let's move on. Okay, so I had a question. Yes. Um, when they were you know doing the outside pan of the house, it occurs to me. How do the Gibblers have such a nice house? They killed somebody. Like, they make the Gibblers seem like total white trash, always broke, always send their kid over to, like, get a meal because they can't feed her. Like, how are they managing to pay that mortgage? Oh, it's a credit card scam. It's ab- it has to be a credit card scam. Like, they put down, like, five grand with one card, and then, like, somebody in their family died, so they got a credit card in their name for, like, ten grand. And There's a way to do it. It's not legal, and it's not moral, but there's absolutely a way. But I guarantee you it involves credit card fraud. Okay. Oh, good work, Michelle. I am very proud of you. Now. (laughs) Honey, now I'm going to teach you the Tanner family motto. Clean is good, and dirt is bad. Dirt bad. (laughs) The future is in good hands. I just finished cleaning the floors. Daniel, something to think about. If you hang a vine up here, we can swing in like Tarzan. (laughs) We're trapped. No, no, we're not. Observe, Joseph. (laughs) Jess, don't get any dirt on the paper towels. Dirt on the paper towels! Dirt on the paper towels! Look at those nutty guys, Michelle. If it wasn't for me, Joey and Jesse would never have met. Now they're inseparable. <laughs> Isn't life ironic? Yep. Dad, home. Stop. Just bad. No. Dad told Michelle the Tanner family motto. Deej, I'm working on a new Tanner family motto. Don't make fun of Dad until you can afford your own apartment. So Michelle is being put to work by her father. Danny is making her wet mop the floor as he teaches. He This is drill sergeant shit that he's doing to this young two-year-old. He's all like, I'm so proud of you. It's time to teach you the Tanner family motto. Clean is good and dirt is bad. Which I feel is kind of like maybe vaguely racist. Like white is good and anything else is bad. Well, it's also like in a way, if you think about it, like sex shaming like oh it's only you're only worth anything if you are clean and virginal so this aryan army that danny tanner is raising this this femme (laughs) aryan army of these little blonde hair blue-eyed girls uh he's training them from a young age that you hate anyone that's not white straight and virginal the rest of y'all are dirty and you're bad according to danny tanner sergeant danny tanner of the filth parade well, Jesse and Joey start to come in the back door, and Danny's all like, yo, I just mop. Don't walk on my floor. And then they make a stupid joke about how they need a George of the Jungle vine or a Tarzan vine. It's Tarzan, wasn't it? Or they need a post on vine, because they <laughs> invented it. J&J Creative Services. So they jumped from the door to the rug, and then unrolled a roll of paper towels so that they could walk down the stairs. And they keep making all these ridiculous jokes, and Danny's just like, y'all are weird. Because they're best friends now. They're, they're so tight because they work together, which is bullshit. I, me personally, I can't be friends with anyone I work with. Well, you kind of are. Like, I'm friendly with them at work. I can never bring that away from work. That's weird and horrible. Like, that's, but the, this whole scenario is bullshit. Calling bullshit on it. Bullshit. Called you bullshit. So, like, if we would have worked together, you wouldn't have dated me? Well, we did work together for a little bit, but it was after we were dating. So that <laughs> it doesn't was count. after we were engaged. Yeah, so it doesn't really count. Don't send me down these roads unless you don't want, <laughs> unless you really, really want to hear the answer, which is no. <gasps> <gasps> Scandal. Nine o'clock Jerk. ABC, Fridays, Sundays. It's on Thursdays. I guess. Two but, days. But you got the time and the channel correct, so good on ya. I knew it was ABC, because that's the channel where they have all the really smart African-American ladies solving crimes. You know, how to get away with murder, scandal, family ties. All of them. <laughs> family ties. Family ties, yeah. Michael really? J. Fox and Vivica Fox, his sister, <laughs> team up to solve crimes related to the Reagan pregnant pregnant pregnancy the ronald reagan pregnancy isn't vivica a fox from indiana 
I don't. I know Kenneth Babyface Edmonds is. I think she is. Let me look that up. While she's looking that up, let me talk about Kenneth Babyface Edmonds, who was <laughs> not on this episode of Full House. But you know who was? Harry Takayama. Harry Takayama makes his return post-wedding uh, as he walks in with DJ and Stephanie. And Danny's like, girls, don't walk on the floor. And they walk on the floor anyway because they are not good little Aryan soldiers. Yes, Vivica A. Fox was born in South Bend. Of course she was. I don't even know what I was alluding to. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> but no, they, they walk in and DJ's all like, oh, I'm going to make food for you. It was like they were, she was tending bar for them behind the kitchen counter. Uh, but Harry's all like, ugh, I hate school. Subtraction sucks. It sucks a lot of butts. And then DJ, who's normally a total dick to these kids, is like, hey, Harry, I'm going to teach you school stuff. And so she breaks out oranges and teaches them subtraction. And he falls in love. She's known, he's known this girl for months now, and now he's in love with her because of subtraction. Well, you didn't bring up the part where he was all ready to quit the first grade and join the Boy Scouts because he could not handle school. And Stephanie was like, I cannot be with a first grade dropout. And which the, 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 the Boy Scouts thing was a cute little joke. I will give them credit where credit is due. Boy Scouts forever! Ugh, scouts. Ugh. Our kids are going to be in Scouts. Our kids are going to be seven foot tall transsexual wonder gods. What? It's my goal for them. To all like, They're going to be like that way and I'm going to be like, hey, I'm cool with it. Because I'm a cool hip dad who's on Tumblr. We're going to be like, yay, and then we'll all hug. And they'll be tall. Because kids these days are really tall. Why and it's are they weird. going to be seven feet tall? Nobody in our families is seven feet tall. Because of the hormones and the food. That's the reason why all these eight-year-olds look like 30-year-old men. All of them. All the hormones and they put the meat in the chicken these days. They make the chickens bigger. They make the kids develop earlier and they're all huge now. Well, when Harry decides he's in love with DJ, he tells her she's the smartest woman in the world and asks her where babies come from. She declines to answer. See, that's a really good pickup line, though. Walk up to a lady and go, hey, where, ba- where do babies come from? And if she doesn't point to her vagina, she's not interested. Because <laughs> that's where babies come from. I'm aware of this. Like, if, she, if you're like, hey, babe, where do babies come from? She points at her vagina, and you guys, or girls... If you're if you're a girl, no so woman no. is going to point to her vagina when you ask her where babies come from. Maybe one would, and that's the one you marry, gents. That's the one you marry. Is the one who points at her vagina because she knows that she's up on her biology. So Joey and Jesse are in their basement, and they're celebrating you know their new home office of uh, you know Double J Creative Services, which they bought a sign for their bedroom. And and there's some gag about how they apparently suck at making coffee. I didn't I didn't really understand. Oh, it's because it. men can't do anything in the kitchen because you know gender roles. Even though you know Jesse's always in there making dinner, and Joey is sometimes a good cook. That's the thing is Jesse's always cooking dinner for these women with an apron on. Yeah, he's like, hey, I look sexy with an apron. What the fuck can he cook coffee then, or make coffee, or bake it, or whatever you do? Well, Joey said something about the the coffee machine being unplugged. Like, are they dumb? Uh, well, don't, don't answer that. I don't, don't answer that. Don't, <laughs> uh, but yeah, they bought a sign for the bedroom and an office that no one will ever see. Like, I get, you know, maybe motivating yourself a little bit. But they probably blew a good 80 to 100 bucks on that sign. And I, I should know this because I work at a sign shop. Don't <laughs> ever. No, I'm not going to give the name out because, no. I don't want you scumbags coming stalking us. I'm giving out our address. Isn't that enough? Again, tweet at Full House Pod, which is, I'm creepy, period. FYI, we have a dog, and he will bark at you. He'll bark. He won't bite. I mean, huh. he'll I mean, give yes, you he kisses, w- but he will yell at you before he does. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, Jesse's like, hey, guys, I want to, hey, guy, not guys. Joey's the only guy down there. Well, Jesse wants to redecorate Joey's room because he feels like he's in Pee Wee's Playhouse. Which Joey then imitates. And this is, okay, this is something I noted down. Like, the worst part of living with Joey Gladstone is any time you, like, <laughs> name any pop culture figure, he goes into, like, a minute-long imitation of them. Like, he has it for one for everybody. Not all of them are good. Most of them are okay. But like, if I'm like, "Hey, this this kitchen is this this ta- this cabinet is high up," I bet I need Michael Jordan to get it for me. And hey, then he, I'm in Space Jam. 
I'm in the underwear commercial. <laughs> See, that'd be crazy if Joey knew about Space Jam. Because he'd be a time traveling comedian. That'd be a great gimmick. I'm really comedians. bad at Michael Jordan impressions. Kind of sounds like Sling Blade. <laughs> mm-hmm, I'm, I'm, I'm Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm, I'm. <laughs> My sling blade just sounds like an electric razor. But yeah, Jesse wants to reorganize everything, and then Danny brings Michelle down and wants to do boys' night with Joey. But no, he can't, because someone calls on the phone, Michelle picks it up, and they're just cool with it. And every time she answers the phone, she's always like, hey man, <laughs> like, where does that come from? Like, is she on a farm? Is she hanging out with Jewish lawyers named Haman? What's going on? But she picks up the phone and she actually like is a decent secretary for only knowing like seven words. And it turns out that there's something wrong with cookies. I'm not going to... The, the joke is that Jesse had to repeat back a tongue twister about chewy chocolate chip cookies. Like, it seems like the thing is that these cookies are supposed to have like chocolate and nuts, and there ended up being a lot more chocolate and a lot less nuts, so they had to rename them. Yeah, and it's like the most weird masturbatory moment in like sitcom history where Jesse like spouts off this, this tongue twister and really quick. And everybody's like, what? Well, they press the laugh track button for, like, it might as well be, like, the Buzz Aldrin button, like, for the moment after he got back from the moon. Like, this this laugh track is incredible. Like, five-minute standing ovation. You could see people, like, throwing flowers off stage. It's crazy. Uh, but yeah, he, there's an issue, they gotta stay home, but they reschedule for Sunday. Well, but then they decide they're just gonna play basketball tomorrow instead. So, in the next scene, DJ's coming in with the mail, and Stephanie's all like, oh, is there anything for me? And DJ just gives her all the junk mail, because I guess that makes little kids happy. By the way, that, that last scene just ended with Michelle making faces. <laughs> And they press the laugh track button again for it to go ape shit as opposed to a normal chuckle. So that, that's, yeah, it's, it's weird. Uh, during this mail exchange, Harry Takayama enters with a giant I love you lollipop. And Harry's all like, or Stephanie's like, oh, Harry, and I love you lollipop. You shouldn't have. And he's like, it's for DJ. Who, by the way, DJ is dressed like a Janet Jackson matador in this scene. Like, giant shoulder pads and, like, metal things going across where her boobs would be. And it's, like, a brown, long, baggy, sh- like, button-up shirt. It's kind of, And she's got, like, the poofy, moosed-up 80s hair. It's like, what up, D. Snyder? <laughs> D. Snyder meets Brandon Flowers from The Killers. I love The Killers, by the way. Yes. Boom, I know the guy from The Killers, yet I mix up the words pregnancy and presidency. (laughs) What up? What about it? So Harry's all like, DJ, what are you doing for lunch tomorrow? And she's like, oh, I'm eating with Kimmy. And he's like, that's okay. I'll I'll bring a friend. We'll double. Or I'll I'll be a friend, uh, (laughs) which is what you about, you almost said. I call you out on your stumbles, yet I do them all the time. And, And then at some point he calls her honey. And then he leaves, and Stephanie accuses DJ of being a man-stealing whore. Yeah, like, Stephanie is like, oh, you went out of your way to steal Harry, when she clearly just no. stood there. And she tells him not to call her chief anymore, either. Yeah, that means it's serious. And then DJ, like, height shames Stephanie. So apparently, like, maybe, like, Billy Barty pissed off one of the writers, and they're like, fuck all short people now. Shout out to anyone who knows who Billy Barty is. You don't clearly. Uh, I don't. Is it a wrestler? No, no. It's uh, he was a mid- like a midget actor. I'm pretty sure he was in the Lollipop Guild. Oh. Like I know him from like some B movies he did in the Me 80s, and he was a total said. dick. I think he was the midget Lollipop that or the little Lollipop person. Lollipop if you're a midget or a little person, and I just called you a midget and you don't like it, I'm sorry. Uh, but he was at a con like right before he passed away, and he was a total dick. So, but Billy Barty is the name that just came to my head because Gary Coleman's the easy joke. So the next day at Joey and Danny's basketball date, Joey is pretending to be a Harlem Globetrotter and whistling Sweet Georgia Brown just to really drive that home. Whereas Danny has like the sweetest blue suede basketball jumpsuit I've ever seen in my life. This thing like costs $700. It's probably not suede. Well, it looks pretty, like, suede. I, I would say it's probably velour. Well, it looks pretty suede Whereas Joey has these jeans on that at first I thought were shorts because the holes at the knees were so big. Like, I thought they were shorts with, like, leg warmers attached. 
But no, it turns out they're just really crappy jeans with a hockey jersey because Dave Coulier can't even break the hockey thing for, like, one scene. He's got to be a hockey nut at all times. So good on you, Dave. And Danny's like, I'm a lot taller than you. I'm going to hold the ball where you can't reach it. That was the best part about being a really huge first grader (laughs) is I didn't want to run when we played basketball, so I just held the ball up over all the other kids' heads. He reminisces about the last time they played, which was apparently July 29th, 1972. Why he remembers the exact date is beyond me. Uh, And I'm not making a joke here. I really do think that the Danny Tanner character... Like, the writer slowly had him contract uh, what is now known as Asperger's. Because, think about it, he got OCD a while back. Now he just has a crazy memory for all these dates. Like, there's something something up with Danny Tanner's brain. He's turning into Rain Man. Yeah, a bit. So Jesse walks in wearing his sweet early 80s end of disco disco suit. <laughs> Uh, he's like, hey, guys, problem solved. Chewy, chippy, chucka, chucka nuts are all solved. Everybody from the actual office is going out to celebrate with us. And Joey's like, I'm your partner. I'm going. Let's ditch this game. And Danny gets all sad. And then Joey's like, oh, you know what? I should probably stay since I already said I would do this. So they put like a final sudden death game thing. And then Joey leaves, and Danny's like, oh, I hate the fact that you guys are in love. Yeah, he, he calls him out for wristing. Yeah. Is that a thing? Well, like, that's what they wondered if it was a thing. Like, if you know that it's a thing, tweet, again, tweet us at Full House Pod or leave a message on the Facebook wall. And per, first off, say, I'm creepy. <laughs> And then tell us whether or not wristing is a real thing. And then they argue about this foul, and Danny's like, whatever, I'm out of here. We go to the girl's bedroom, where Stephanie's crib, or not Stephanie's crib, Michelle's crib, has replaced Stephanie's bed, and Stephanie's bed has been moved to Michelle's room. Keep in mind that of the three girls, DJ is the one most equipped to carry heavy things, being what they call Hollywood hefty, which is not hefty at all, but they think she's hefty because she's a girl that's getting hips or something. Stephanie is like 10 pounds. Michelle's a baby, yet Michelle and Stephanie somehow got the crib and the bed changed. I'm assuming it was just Stephanie. Yeah, it's which is crazy. Like this. I wonder if Stephanie's bed is on casters. But then, but then the crib's not though. She would have to, like, take it apart and put it up or, like, drag it across the hallway. I wouldn't be surprised if the crib was either. Then DJ would be able to move it, too, if that's the case. I don't know. Yeah. Either way, the crib is now where uh, Stephanie's bed is, and DJ's all like, oh, what's going on? And Stephanie comes in and she's like, Michelle, don't trust DJ with anything you like, because if she likes it, she's gonna take it. Yeah, Stephanie's still, like, acting like DJ stole Harry when she clearly just taught her math. Taught him math, which that's a very progressive thing. Yeah, we, that they were showing an Asian being bad at math. Oh my goodness! Yeah, what? we had the the gay positive boss, and now we have the Asian that's bad at math. Congratulations, Full House. <laughs> Step ahead. We are we are stepping ahead in the world. We have racist shows on TV now, like Off the Boat. You no, like that it's show. It's fresh off the boat, and it's not a racist show. Well, when all the characters talk in, like, that really crazy accent. They're supposed to be from Taiwan. They have accents. But it's like... It's s- based on real life. I know, but uh, I read a long article that... Yeah, the guy- Eddie Wong was not happy about their accents because they didn't sound like his mom and dad's accents. But these are people who don't actually have an accent. They had to learn accents. Well, no, they screwed with his book, like, quite a bit, actually. Well, he, he's a producer of the show. Yeah. He's heavily involved. And he he was heavily involved. He backed out, from what I can tell, because uh, he wrote an article for Vice where he has a web series, and he was talking about how they had him involved for a little bit, and then they just kept changing stuff, and now he's just kind of like, whatever about it. They have to list him as a producer because it's his book, so he's not happy about it's it. It's funny, though. I enjoy the show. Well, I just can't get past, because the actors are Asian American, and they do really bad Taiwanese accents. And it just, it comes off kind of mean. Only the parents, and they're not trying to do bad accents. Well, that's the... the, Like, they're not, like, doing it in a stereotypical manner. Like, they're doing their best. It's not like Mickey Rooney in Breakfast at Tiffany's. 
Well, I, I still would rather them not have accents. But his can't parents had accents. They were immigrants. But if they can't do them, then either get actors who can or just don't have them do them. How many shows have, or many movies have I seen set in England where Wait, nobody has accents? Um, Kevin Costner should not, you should, no, no, don't even get me started on Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Okay? Um, don't even. Well, I'm not going to. Um, by the way, it was the, getting back to Full House, uh, like we probably should. Uh, so people don't, like, leave crappy iTunes reviews. Because that's all I care about in life, everybody. Was this all, like, the same day? Like, all these DJ scenes where she's wearing the same clothes? Because I feel like they're in different days. Yet she didn't change clothes and everybody else did. Which would be weird. Because she wore that I shirt. I thought they were the same day. I thought the lollipop thing happened earlier in the day. And then the bed thing happened later in the yeah. day. Yeah, see, I was originally thrown off because I thought that the basketball game was on a Sunday, but then DJ got mail. So I was wrong there. I totally thought that it was different days. Either way. Um, and yeah. So when Jesse and Joey come home, Danny's vacuuming his sweater. And they're all like, hey, you know, what What was going on? Why did you get all pissed off and leave? And so Danny just turns the vacuum up louder so he can't hear. And they're all like, oh, well, that's mature, blah, blah, blah. And Jesse's like, are you guys really going to throw away a 20-year friendship over all this? And Danny's like, well, we're, we only became friends because I saved Joey's butt. And Joey's like, no, I saved your butt. And they just sit there and argue about it. And Danny's like, well, you know what? One time after lunch in fifth grade, we were having recess. I think we were having mac and cheese and jello cubes. Like, again, because that's relevant. But again, that's like, again, he gets OCD. And then he's, like, super obsessed with, like, numbers and figures for, like, the taxes and stuff. And now he's really good with, like, insanely good with dates. Like, Mara Lou Henner. Have you ever seen her rattle off dates and, like... No, I have yeah. not. Yeah, there's apparently... They, 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 it's apparently it's something wrong with her brain, but I think it's kind of cool. Where she, you give her a date, she knows what day it was. Like... June 26th, 1972, she can tell you what day it was and at least three things that happened on that day. Like, I mean, I have a good memory, but, like, my memory is not, like, that specific, I don't think. No, mine's... I don't have a memory I at can all. tell you, May 21st, 1988 was a Saturday, and Alexandra Hayes was born. I forgot what my birthday was today. <laughs> I did. I knew. I know it's... I always know it's in August, but I forget it's the day. It's the 11th. Yes, August 11th, so if anyone would like to send me presents... Hit me up on Twitter. I'll give out our address on Twitter. Eggs is August 7th, and then we celebrate Luna's on August 17th. Lots of me and the cats. And my granny's is August 9th. So we do the flashback, flashback, flashback. Yes, to 1968. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and with the Jello, apparently he didn't like Jello, so he traded it for Succotash. Yeah. Why, why was Succotash an option in the cafeteria? And why would any child choose Succotash over Jello? Uh, I was probably just like, hey, doesn't Succotash sound funny? Hey, guys, yeah, let's go smoke cigars and go to lunch in the writer's room. So, yeah, 1968. Danny's got like a bloody nose or something. He's sitting on the bench. And Joey has apparently started his first day at this elementary school, and he's already in trouble. Yeah, he's walking around with his, I'm not kidding, he's got both hands kind of in his front pockets, but just like the fingernails, he's walking around like a fat cop <laughs> in like a 60s comedy show, like kind of thrusting, kind of not, like, but it's totally weird. Well, he's told to sit down and not move a muscle, so he, you know, being a little smart ass, he is, he just freezes. And uh, as he's frozen, little Jesse runs by asking some little girls to kiss him. No, he's like, who wants a yeah. kiss? Like he's a fucking ghost or something. And they're all running away. <laughs> and by the way, they did not even try with any of these little kid actors to, like, little Danny kind of looks like Bob Saget. Dave Coulier looks nothing like the little boy they picked. And Jesse's little boy looks like... They uh, have completely different skin tones. Yeah, like he looks like... What's that lady from Once Upon a Time, the one with the short black hair? Are you talking about uh, uh, the Jennifer... Um, Goodwin? Yeah, Goodwin? Jennifer Goodwin. Yeah, like he kind of looks like her. <laughs> like, so like there's no effort put into this whatsoever other than, oh, they kind of have the same hair. Some big bully kid comes over to bother Danny. That kid's, by the way, been in like everything. Like I don't know his name. Like, I might IMDb him here in a second. But and he's... Joey's all like, oh, hey, I'm going to tell a bunch of jokes and get you to stop messing with this kid. And Danny is, like, hella impressed. And uh, Joey pulls out his 1001 Insults book as Jesse runs back through, being chased by two much older girls, yelling one at a time. 
Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, what are they gonna do with this kid? They okay. Like Jesse looks like he's maybe first, second grade. These girls look like sixth, seventh, eighth graders. Yeah. Like, a- apparently, he started much younger than we thought he did with the much older ladies. So this kid, uh, this Sheldon kid, he's been in like everything, by the way. His name's Brandon Crane, who actually has a current headshot up on IMDb. If you want to go look him up, um, he's been on a, among other things. Uh, the Wonder Years, a number of episodes of The Wonder Years. An episode Years. of Step by Step. Uh, Get a Life, It's Gary Shandling's Show, Mr. Belvedere, Magnum P.I. Um, apparently he sang with the Glee Club on an episode of The Wonder Years. Um, he apparently has a lot of personal details. on. The, he, he edited this IMDb himself, by the way. It has like his height and all sorts of trivia facts about him. He's 5'11 like, now, in case you wondered. Yes, and uh, there apparently on the IMDb message board there are two posts about him. So good job, Brandon Crane, for for being good at editing your own IMDb page. Well, and after Jesse's about to be molested by middle schoolers, uh, Brandon Crane slash Sheldon comes back over with the teacher, and he's all like, this is the kid who's been picking on me, and she's about to, like, kill Joey Gladstone right then and there. Like, I half expect her to pull out a paddle and be like, bend over, Joseph. You know, and then Danny's like... I promise he's been a perfect angel. And he's like, he's lying. And the teacher's like, Daniel Tanner would never lie. Yeah, by the way, when did he he become Danny? Because it seems like he would be cool enough at this point to be like, hey, I'm Danny. Whereas now. Danny was never cool. I wouldn't be surprised if Joey gave him that name. Well, probably. I'm just just thinking, like, back then he would have been cool with being called Danny to, like, fit in. Whereas. 1989 Danny Tanner would want to be called Daniel because there's, again, there's something not so right with his brain. Because, you know, Joey and Danny have, like, you know, saved each other. They agree to be soul brothers, which involves a soul shake. And then they agree to bury their most treasured items, Danny's giant's cap and Joey's 1001 insults book, in the ground. Yes, and while they do the soul shake, by the way, and maybe the only time that they ever address the fact that there are no black people <laughs> on Full House. There's a very, like, a super crazy subtle joke for Full House where they do the soul shake and, like, they have a wide shot and there's, like, a black kid that looks like Freddie Boom Boom Washington from Wait, uh, Welcome Back Cotter who just, like, kind of shakes his head like, these dumb honkies, and then walks away. <laughs> Jesse then ends up having to come sit next to them on the bench because he's been chasing girls. And Miss Borland, you know, the teacher who hates Joey, is all like, you're going to have to sit here with me. And he's like, have mercy. So apparently he had a catchphrase way before he had a TV show. So he was destined. Oh, and when they flash back to the present, Jesse's like, I wonder if I still have her number. Yeah, like, he's he totally, like... He's a sex addict. They're flashing back to solve a childhood issue, which apparently they all three had the same flashback slash dream at the same time. <laughs> just fucking weird in and of itself. But he's sitting there having like a boner during it. And he says that he used to fantasize about her being on Laugh-In with Socket Toomey painted on her stomach. I'm surprised he didn't lose his virginity earlier to an older woman. Like, the fact that he made it to 12 or whatever it was. I think he was 13. Yeah, the fact that he made it to 13. Maybe 14. stunning. I'm surprised he wasn't, like, five vaginas deep by that point. But, yeah, Danny and Joey decide, we're going to dig our stuff up and take it away because you're stupid. You're stupid, too. So DJ and Stephanie and something happens from there upstairs. Yeah, DJ is trying to make Michelle go back to her room. And Stephanie's like, uh, no, that's not your room anymore. Harry comes in and Stephanie's like, DJ, you hypnotized him. That's how all this happened. And Jesse's like, okay, everyone come into my room. We're going to work this out. No, it's way creepier how he said it. He says, and I quote, come on, everyone to my room. We're going to play Junior Love Connection. <laughs> Which, for a child who was um, admittedly sexually abused, I would know. That's not... I, first off, I would never leave my kids alone, home alone with Jesse. But to if I'm those kids, DJ's at least old enough to know that this is a little weird. But they go through with it. Whatever. They go play Junior Love Connection in Jesse's bed. And so D- DJ tells Harry that she's not interested, but Jesse tells her she's got to be nicer. And so she's like, Harry... 
Why do you want to throw away all this that you have with Stephanie? You guys have been together for a while. You've been friends forever. It's a good thing you got going. Don't throw it away. Oh, and before all this, there's a weird joke where Michelle's kicked out of Jesse's room for reading his mail. <laughs> like, I didn't understand. I'm assuming it's some sort of inside joke about fan mail that we were all supposed to get. Maybe it was on, like, Entertainment Tonight at the time. Mary Hart's like, exclusive. The Olsen twins, those little fucking brats, are reading through John Stamos' mail, and he's pissed off about it. And that was like an inside joke or something. I just figured the joke came from the fact that you're not supposed to read other people's mail. Well, it just seemed very random for the the, the scene and the time. But DJ's like, Carrie, you're stupid and you're short. I hate you. <laughs> and Harry's like, Wah. And so when Stephanie's still not ready to forgive, Jesse grabs Harry's arms and starts pretending that he is Harry, having him having him beg Stephanie for forgiveness, you know, moving his arms about and be like, oh, Stephanie, take me back. I'm so sorry. Please, please. Yeah, they start playing human puppets with these children. (laughs) And then DJ grabs Stephanie and she's like, okay. They're like, fine, we make up, hug, which is... No, they didn't hug. They shook hands. That's right. They shook hands. And then Stephanie punches Harry as hard as she can (laughs) in the shoulder to indicate that it is time to play tag. What a dick. What a little dick Stephanie Tanner is. Like, if I were Harry, I'd just be like, deuces, I'm out. So, Joey and Danny finally find their treasures, and they dig it up. And along with their hat and book is their soul pledge. And Joey reads it out loud, and Danny's all like, oh, our middle names suck. Well, yeah. Well, once again, for those of you who have not heard us tell these middle names on the episode where we had the DVD uh, trivia track up, they are Daniel Ernest Tanner and Joseph Elvin Gladstone. Alvin. It was Elvin. It's like Alvin. Like the joke was that they were E and E. I don't know. No, it's Alvin. Okay, well, fine. I'm fairly certain it's Alvin. Which it just threw me off because the little kid they picked to play Joey looked like he was of the Elvin kind. Now I have to look that up. I'm funny. Elvin kind because he looked like an elf. Like a fucking elf. That's yes, the only... it is Alvin. Okay, that's that's the great thing about having a, having the internet accessible, is we could just type in Joey Gladstone. It gives us his character's middle name and a picture of him looking like a grandmother. Well, Danny finally admits that he's jealous of Jesse and Joey's relationship, and just Joey's all like, "Are you kidding me? Like we've been friends for twenty years. I live in your house. I'm taking care of your kids for you. Like, do you really think we're not gonna be friends? Like, what's wrong with you?" It's because Danny is not emotionally developed. Again, this guy's wife just died, what, a year and a half ago? And they're expecting him to just be okay with, like, losing his best friend, potentially? He's not developed enough, and he's gone through a lot of shit. Uh, Quite frankly, I'm kind of surprised that Danny is as okay as he is. Again, considering he lost his wife a year and a half ago. Well, Joey apologizes and says he won't take Danny for granted anymore, and they soul shake on it. And they decide they're going to rebury things but and come it, dig them up when they're old. But doesn't that like def- defeat the point that it's already like been seen and like pulled up from the earth? Doesn't that defeat the point of the? I don't know. Uh, did you ever do a time capsule? No, I wanted to. But what stopped you? Parents, guardians, feelings. Mostly parents. They wouldn't let you bury like a My Little Pony, or mm. a Scout badge. I have my most of my scout badges, actually. I'm going to burn them later. No, you're not. You little or the, the rope tying one. I I earned a badge for that, but I don't have that badge with me. What badges do you have? Um, I'm not sure. I I know I have a, a camping badge, my sleepover badge. I can go get them if you want. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Maybe we can talk about them in a couple of weeks. But as they're going through this, they're realizing that something is missing. And so they call Jesse, who has to leave the girls at the Gibblers, and rush down with his hairdryer. And he's like, what? What's wrong? And they're like, we need you to sign this paper. And he realizes that they're going to include him. And he's like, you don't have to. And they're like, we want to. And Jesse's like, did it really have to be my hairdryer? And then they make him do the soul handshake. 
And he's not happy about it. Yeah, which, and you can tell Stamos didn't want to do it either, because they fade out before he ever has to do it. Because the, the credits start rolling, they do the handshake, and then right when, uh, I think it was Joey looks at Jesse to start doing it, they fade out. Like, he only agreed to do it, because otherwise they'd have to hug. But, you know, you can tell Stamos, as an actor, did not want to do it. He took himself too seriously. He's like, hey, everyone thinks of me as, like, a sweet sex idol. I ain't doing that. So uh, you can tell he wasn't like super duper happy about about the whole deal. <laughs> hey, what do you say we bury this stuff again and come back when we're little old men and dig it up? Yeah. By then, I'll be so shriveled up this cap might fit me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's my cap. My book. The pledge. <laughs> Wait a minute. Something's missing here. You guys are nuts, man. I had to stash the girls at the Gibblers, rush down here just to bring in my blow dryer? Sorry, we needed your most prized possession. <laughs> Sign here. This is to prove that Danny T, Joey G, and Jesse K are official soul brothers, pals, and best friends forever. Oh, you guys don't have to do this. I mean, this is your thing. Now it's our thing. We're all in this together. Thank you, guys. I'm touched. But my blow dryer? <laughs> All right. But if my hair looks like hell tomorrow, I'm coming back here and digging that thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we all got to do the official soul brother handshake. Come on, guys. Isn't this a little silly? We could all hug. <laughs> Let's do the shake. <laughs> okay, watch. Well, Based on the evidence, Alex, who to you was literally the worst? Harry Takayama. Fuck you. He was the best. What did he do? Um, he just threw away Stephanie because DJ taught him fractions. He didn't throw her away. He did. He was ignoring her. He's like, despite the fact that they've been boyfriend, girlfriend for a while, they got married a few episodes ago. He's all like, whatever, you know, I don't need you. I like your older sister. She teaches me math. But okay, here's my counterpoint. A few weeks ago, Stephanie forced Harry into marriage. He's like seven. That's too much pressure for a kid. The second he sees him out, he's going to take it. So I don't blame well, him one he bit. he could have done it more delicately. I mean, like, even, like, the second he decided he was in love with her, he was, like, rubbing it in Stephanie's face, parading his love around. Like, that's got to be, okay, as a, as a girl who has had her heart broken way too many times, it sucks. All by me. Yes, like, let's put you in that place because you're just that special. I am. But to defend Harry Takayama, I will quote the great American poet, Selena Marie Gomez. The heart wants what it wants. Is that her middle name? I don't fucking know. I'm just pulling, it was a joke. I was like, hey guys, I know Selena Gomez's middle name. Uh, no, I totally defend Harry Takayama. Um, I actually have Jesse down. As literally... It is Marie. Boom! Yes! I win! Dude, how did you do that? I don't know, because everyone's middle name is Marie. Either Anne or Marie or... It's my Aunt Lisa's middle name. Or Ray. That's so, my dad's middle Selena name. Selena Ray Gomez. No, Jesse to me is literally the worst. Here's why. You split up a friendship. Unintentionally. But he could have, like, backed off. He, he took... First off... He he intentionally came into a basketball game that was made in front of him. Yeah, that was crappy. Yeah, that was a dick move. Also, he scuffed up the basketball court with his little black Italian shoes. So fuck you, dude. But he splits up the friendship. He splits up the basketball game. And then when they try to include him in their thing after they, having to remove him from the situation, come back together and put together the friendship, he's a dick about being included. I don't want to do the hedge. Oh, fuck you, Uncle Jesse. You're the worst. Literally the worst. And I think you're wrong for saying Harry Takayama. I'm going to take offense to that. I'm going to tweet at him. I'm going to find his Twitter someday. And I'm going to... You just touch my wiener. <laughs> I've tried to pinch it. What? <laughs> I take it back. You're literally the worst this week. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> So if, if I'm doing the show alone next week, it's because I've killed my wife. 
Actually, I shouldn't say that because if you if you die in the next week, oh my god. Um, ignore what I just said. Ignore what I just said. I'm not going to kill my wife. Uh, she will be alive. If I die, he did it. Call the police. What if you do die now? Oh my god, I feel awful. <laughs> Good. Uh, you deserve to feel awful if you wished that upon me. You know, I, I gotta cuss someone out and I feel weird. Um, okay, okay fine. I'm, I'm grouped together. I I'm can fine. pinch your nipple if that'll help. No, it will not help. It'll get you punched. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's time, right before the end of the episode, I gotta cuss somebody out, uh, because they went to tinyurl.com slash fullhousepodcast, they saw our podcast page on iTunes, they went, they subscribed, they gave us a five-star rating, they wrote a short review, and now they are ending up on Tom's iTunes review cuss list. So, Michael Maurer, I'm gonna cuss you out right now, it's gonna be hectic, are you ready? Listen, Michael. Michael Mauer. Was that like your name? Your parents couldn't spell more. They had to be like Mauer. What a fucking dumb thing to do. Your parents are turds. And you, Michael. Listen, buddy. I'm repeating a joke from an episode from the future that we taped four days ago. If your parents name you Michael or Josh, it means that they did, couldn't come up with a name. They might as well have written default on the fucking sheet. You turd. That's how much you were cared about when you popped out of your vagina mouth area <laughs> your mom was like hey where your dad's like hey where do babies come from and your mom's like points down to her vagina and then they fucked and then you came out and they didn't care enough to give you a cool name like steve or cody fuck you you fucking turd oh i just i you can't the shit bags like you with the name michael it's dumb fucking dumb go get a better name you can legally change your name you're a fucking grown-up now i assume that costs money if you would like to be cussed out on a future episode of Everywhere You Look by me, much like Mr. Michael Maurer was, please go to tinyurl.com slash fullhousepodcast. Uh, give us a nice five-star rating. Write a short review. I will take note of it, and I will cuss you out on a future episode. And thank you so much to Michael for being a good sport. Uh, he wrote a very kind review, which can, you can catch at tinyurl.com slash fullhousepodcast. But with that, we're going to head out for this week. Um, I went to Twitter and Facebook uh, to to outsource the outro of the episode. This week, we asked, what one item of yours would you bury in an underground time capsule, much like Danny and Joey did as soul brothers? Our favorite comes from Twitter, at an archaeologist, a dude named Tristan Boyle. Uh, So thank you so much, Tristan, both for listening and for joining us in our fun outro game. Everywhere you look, there's a hard drive filled with steam games and metal music. You're lost out there and you're all alone. A light is waiting to catch.